I really don't think it's a single event. I mean, I you know, for the last year, we've seen what I, you know, I call it the unholy trinity of um, Bitcoin, Tesla, and ARK, kind of locked at the head, all driven by, I mean, when you've turned your story over to Elon Musk, you've lost the storyline. And Bitcoin celebrated when Musk bought Bitcoin for uh, for Tesla. And I think it's it's facing the other side of being a celebrity driven, you know, at, at least at the moment, a celebrity driven investment. But I think what, you know, you can point to particular events, but to me, the bigger problem with Bitcoin is I don't think anybody is clear. I mean, I, I would love uh, a Bitcoin bull to explain this to me. What's the end game here? Where do you see Bitcoin 10 years from now if it's successful? And I still haven't heard anybody state something that, that is believable about Bitcoin's end game. Yeah, but the counter argument there is that this one uh, will be a slow evolution. Like it will take its time uh, to get into the system, to develop a system of its own, which will be parallel uh, to uh, the existing system, which is a more traditional system. And so play it for the long haul. What do you make of that? And 10 years ago, I remember having a debate with somebody who's a Bitcoin bull, and he said, you know, sooner or later, in the next few years, we're going to see people using Bitcoin to buy lunch, to buy, uh, to buy houses, to buy cars. I'm still waiting. I mean, I'll give you an example of, of the overhype that you see behind Bitcoin. There's a come, I mean, an overstock a few years ago said it was going to accept Bitcoin. Huge amount of celebration in Bitcoin bull circles. Finally, overstock, a retail firm is going to take Bitcoin. You know that in 2020, or Bitcoin coll collectively accounted for about three to four million dollars of revenues at Overstock, and it's a two billion dollar company. I mean, Overstock will make more money trading Bitcoin than it does having Bitcoin be used in transactions, and that's what Bitcoin's become. It's become this speculative instrument that people try to make money on. It's a it, as a currency. It's clearly not found a foundation. And Professor, I mean, it makes me wonder, those are your thoughts on Bitcoin, but what about the crypto space more broadly speaking? Because we did see other competitors, if we can call them that, mm -hmm. peers getting dragged down in the mm -hmm. carnage overnight. But prior to this, other voices have said, look, if you want to put your money in something, put it in Ether for various reasons. Let's mm -hmm. say it's preferred by institutions, maybe one reason someone gives. I mean, what's your assessment on that? Ether has a better shot of becoming a commodity. I mean, you could argue that... Mm -hmm if the future lies in blockchain transactions and Ether is going to be a better lubricant of those blockchain transactions, right. you could actually argue that Ether has a stronger upside story than Bitcoin does. So I think we need to start to separate the crypto space into those cryptos that are trying to be currencies, those cryptos that are trying to be collectibles, millennial gold, and those cryptos that are actually commodities. Because right now we, bu we bundle them all together in this one space. So. And I think eventually we're going to see a cryptocurrency. We're going to see, but I'm not sure that any of the cryptocurrencies that you see out there meet the bill. Yeah, and I mean, we didn't even mention Dogecoin, which of course started as a parody, <laughs> and others have questioned whether or not that's part of the problem, that it's almost reducing the credibility of the rest of the space. So to that point, sir, do you think what we're seeing right now is a healthy correction? No, I th uh, in this market, the healthy correction will be when people start to talk about fundamentals. No, all that Bitcoin bulls seem to talk about, their biggest sales pitch for Bitcoin is look at how much money I've made on Bitcoin. That's it. That's, that's the end of the sales pitch. That's not a sales pitch. That tells me nothing about the substance here. A healthy correction will be one where we debate where the end game for Bitcoin is, and we come to a conclusion, at least for the moment, on what that end game is going to look like. I don't see people talking about that end game. They're just reacting. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin is up 20% tomorrow, down 25% the day after. This has become a purely speculative game. 